Yeah, this is after how many days? Of, yeah, everybody's a little bit tired today. Yeah, this is Friday of DrupalCon. You can tell I haven't shaved in several days. Uh, no one has actually slept this week. It's DrupalCon traditions. Hey, I did shave for the second time this week today. Oh, <laughs> you're a better man than I, at least when it comes to shaving. <laughs> yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. I am with Larry Garfield at DrupalCon Amsterdam. It is a sprint day. Uh, back over in those rooms over there, there's a lot of Drupal happening. We're building up to, among other things, the first patch ritual, which is one of my very, very favorite moments at DrupalCon. Do you, do you, uh, have you ever seen those? Do you go to those? I, I usually go to those, yeah. It's, I, I feel like I should, sir, in respect for the new contributor. Um, one of the things I've seen Drupal, one of the things Drupal always does best, and I think one of the reasons we have such a large community is we have a large number of people whose primary involvement in Drupal is helping other people be involved in Drupal. And, you know, people like, you know, Webchick's been there, um, Angie, uh, that is Angie, um, XJM, Jess has been there, uh, Andrea Soper has been there, um, you know, various other people. Gabber does a lot of that uh, these days, Gabber Hochi. I um, hope I got his name pronounced right. Um, you know, various others who spend a lot of time just making it possible for other people to contribute and celebrating the new contributors. And that's, I don't know any other community that's put as much effort into celebrating the newbie. Right, and it's interesting because there are people in the community whose specialty, mm -hmm. practically, um, along with the front end people, the back end people, the marketers, whatever, themers, designers, like all the specialties that you think you could have, we really have mentoring, mentoring specialists mm -hmm. now. Uh, people like Ruben Tejero, Kathy Thays, you know, but, some of the people you named are also huge, important yeah. contributors yeah. who write a lot of code and still um, they make time to to be in on on making sure that people who've heard about this thing and want to try it out are, are enabled to do that. I love that. Yeah, and that's, I have not seen any other community do that to anywhere near the extent we do. And I think that's a large part of why Drupal is one of the nine largest open source projects in the world. Uh, just we, we build that community so heavily. And it's, uh, unless I'm mistaken, it's the only CMS in that list, right? Yes. What's your first Drupal memory? First Drupal memory. First or first memorable? I don't know. So what I, what I usually list for that is my first core patch. Um, it was uh, back in 4.7, and I was trying to add caption support to theme table because I needed it for a project I was working on at the time. And, you know, posted a patch, was nervous about it, you know, got it posted, there was some discussion about it, um, and then it got committed on the first patch, which never happens anymore, but it, it actually happened once. And at the time, Dries was the only committer, really. And he committed it and said, you know, committed to head, thanks. And it's one word, but here I am, this little nobody, you know, contributor with a five line patch and the project lead of Drupal is saying thank you to me. Oh my God. And it's just a wonderful feeling. And that's, that's something that I think Dries does really right as a project lead as a committer is, you know, he almost always says thank you when he, you know, commits something or accepts a patch or whatever. Um, I'll, he's not the only one that does that, but I'm just, I, I don't want to understate how important that is and how much that can help new contributors to feel welcome. Just that simple, you know, thank you for what you're doing uh, can go a long way. Right, and this whole uh, appreciation of mm -hmm. new people to the project and, and a lot of the cultural cues that I guess are Drupalisms, meeting in person, mm -hmm. saying thank you, um, explaining things however many times it takes, uh, they mostly came from Dries and the, the very early group of, of people around the project and, and have, I think they got a bunch of stuff really, really right. And I, to this day, I don't know if it was instinct or plan, 
But mm -hmm. but those little things really really help uh, this turn into. So we had just we're in the middle of at the end of a DrupalCon where we broke the old European con record by 500 attendees, which is incredible. There are 2,300 mm -hmm. people that were here this week. So yeah, I love that. It's just another for me. It's this uh, Drupal superpower right. that that we can make new people feel at home. It's like exactly the opposite of the RTFM culture. Mm -hmm. And you know certainly there are times when saying some variant of RTFM is in fact the appropriate answer, or you know, pointing someone to documentation nicely or whatever. But what made you stick with Drupal? Maybe stick with Drupal. I think a lot of it, so early on, I think a lot of it was uh, I could get ramped up on things quickly. Um, I, it was not my first project, so it's not my first development experience, but it was the first open source project I ever got involved in. And you know the community was nice. I could see uh, from the start that it was a project that had legs, was going somewhere. Um, for those who are familiar with the story of the original Drupal.org server, um, it about two weeks after I got involved in Drupal and started looking at it, the uh, the website crashed because the server it was on was a shared server uh, was hacked through some other site on the server, and so Dries quickly put up a um, a message, just a, a single page saying. We've got an offer from Open Source Labs to host Drupal.org for free if we can provide them with a server. So can we get maybe three thousand dollars in donations for a server? And <clears throat> forty-eight hours later, they had ten thousand dollars in donations. And Tim Bray from Sun, father of XML, sent them a server just kind of because. Right, like the top Spark, whatever Sun yeah. had, he just put it in the mail. Dries also had an incredible amount of stress because ten thousand dollars showed up in his personal bank account. Right. I think that moment not only showed that, oh boy, a lot of people actually cared and thought mm -hmm. that this was a great project, but um, that moment also kicked off the creation of the Drupal Association. Right. Because Dries didn't want to have $10,000 randomly show up in his bank account that he was then accountable for. for. I mean, most people are okay with $10,000 showing up in their bank account. Just, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, paying the, not having to pay the taxes on it when it's right. not <laughs> your income in that sense. Yeah, so he, he didn't want to be a fiscal agent for Drupal, and I don't blame him. <laughs> Um, but that, that really showed me this is a project that's got legs, it's going to be around, people care, this is not going to become abandoned where um, will Drupal last forever? I don't know that anything lasts forever, but Drupal has a long life ahead of it, and I think it still does. So you know, betting on Drupal is a fairly safe bet. You were one of the uh, instigators, or you captured the moment a few years ago uh, when you wrote your blog post, uh, Getting Off the Island. Mm -hmm. and talking about, hey, we have to stop reinventing the wheel. We can open source our open source project. We can take things that other people do well and put them into Drupal 8 so that we can solve the cool hard problems that uh -huh. we're going to be facing. Fast forward a couple of years to today, a lot of people are talking about the PHP renaissance, how people are coming together. And some people are saying, hey, Drupal might or might not have kicked that off. But I'm looking 12 to 24 months into the future from uh -huh. October 2014, and thinking, you know, with all of these external components and with how our contributions are flowing into other projects, um, it's going to be a lot harder to say what is Drupal and what is not Drupal and I think in that's a couple a good of thing. years. I mean, if you think about it, you know, what is. So the, the PHP ecosystem is coming together, the web ecosystem is coming together. It's a lot more integrated, a lot more uh, collaborative. So projects that are collaborating need to ask themselves, what is our value add? Drupal's value add, oh, not over previous versions of Drupal, but over just the PHP baseline, is not you know, that it does dependency injection. It's not that it can serve HTML. It's not that it has forms. Its value add is entities, views, and the community. It's we are a content management system and a very good one. By that, I mean you know, an actual content manage, structured syst management system, not a tool for building pages like Dreamweaver. But you're a very good content management system. And we have a community behind it that has your back and that you can rely on that you know, is not going away anytime soon. And that's Drupal's value add. So put our effort and emphasis there on building a really solid CMS really solid, flexible CMS platform with a community that can support it. 
those other things that get there, that's not our value add. People don't use Drupal for hooks. They use Drupal for nodes. They use Drupal for views. They don't use Drupal for FAPI. And so the more we can outsource our relevancies and focus on core competencies, and I always sound like a marketer at this point, but it's true. <laughs> you know, the more we can say the important things that make Drupal worth using, let's focus on those. And the things that are not the reason someone comes to Drupal, if we can save time by outsourcing that, it may not be perfect. Could we write something better ourselves? Maybe in seven times as long, you know, could we have written a routing system better than what Symfony has? Probably. Would it be done by now? Not even close. But we just brought in all that code and got you know, three quarters of the way to where we wanted to be by adding up one single library. So I want to add one more value add. Mm -hmm. And I think that is everything that we do well is architected in a way that it is extensible and flexible, yeah. right? It is, you, you, you get some more baggage with you, but uh, its advantage over a specialized mm -hmm. system is when your next requirement comes in, yeah. when the next major whatever it is on the web happens, we're ready to mm -hmm. incorporate it, to communicate with it. And I think that goes to the whole you know, framework versus application debate that we've been having for since there's been a Drupal. And <clears throat> you know, something that I've, I've observed in Drupal 8, in some ways you became more of a framework, in other ways more of a, an application. As one of the framework people uh, for a long time, I think framework actually lost that battle, and we lost it to modern PHP. Meanwhile, the application has evolved to being a platform, and we should focus on thinking of Drupal as a PHP-powered content management platform, and think of it in terms of not, you know, what is the canned user experience that we can offer, but how can we build a tool chain that lets you build a great user experience and then have a default. How can we build a tool chain that lets you do all the content modeling shenanigans you need to do for whatever site or task you're doing and have reasonable defaults? You know, look at it as not an application, but as the core of a platform ecosystem. And you know, that means designing things and planning things in different ways than you would a pure application. You need to think about extensibility in a different way between a framework and an application and a platform. I think at this point, Platform is the right way to think at the high level okay. uh, with some framework stuff alongside it. So, to sum up, <laughs> your house needs a solid foundation so that your layer cake of community can grow flowers that you put your furniture into? Was I listening? Something like that. <laughs> okay.